We also now have another another potential um, bomb dropping scenario, as it were. Uh, President there Obama are definitely no lack of bomb dropping scenarios in yes, our lives. Indeed, and uh, President Obama now apparently the uh, fourth president in a row to authorize uh, military action, uh, or I should say, new military action in Iraq. Is that a new record? Um, I, you know that that very well may be. Uh, George George Herbert Walker Bush, of course, with Operation what was it? Iraqi Freedom. I get him confused. Uh, Desert I Shield, I think it was. Desert, Desert Storm. Storm. And uh, maybe because we had both Reagan and uh, Obama bombing Libya, but but I don't think anybody did in between. That's right. I could you know. be wrong. So it's I think a real it's shame a to have those. For one country. It's a real shame to. I'm actually holding up my package of uh, Desert Storm trading cards. I have a whole box of these uh, still in their wrapper. Uh, coalition. It was sort of like, well, if you got a Babe Ruth, you were hoping that those would have some serious value someday. And, and Schwarzkopf has just disappeared, hasn't he? Yeah. Well, he died, but that wasn't so. That probably wasn't nice of me to say, but his value, let's just say, he's, he's, it's not. It didn't go the way of like a Babe Ruth or a Luke Gehrig the way you thought it might. Well, you know, I guess I, I thought they would become rare commodities. I didn't realize that we would be putting out trading cards for a new war every uh, seven or eight years. So, uh, and to dilute but, the value, you know. Uh, be that as it may, let's just, I, I want to get just some of the, uh, the facts out about this, um, uh, uh, why President Obama has purported to do this. Um, there are anywhere between, uh, I've seen estimates from fifteen to 40,000 uh, <clears throat> Iraqis, uh, Yazidi refugees. They are right. a um, a particular min a religious minority in Iraq that, uh, along with a lot of Iraqi uh, Christians and, uh, frankly, uh, some Iraqi uh, Sunni uh, Muslims, have been uh, driven out of the areas in northern Iraq around Mosul uh, over a half a million and Shia, I should say, uh, uh, over a half a million internal refugees now um, from this latest round of violence. And these a particular uh, 20 to 40,000 people uh, basically sought refuge on a, um, a mountain range, um, and they are... Uh, stuck there on this Mount Sinjar in the northwest of Iraq with, uh, with no supplies. Uh, there have been reports that about 20 children have died so far, uh, and they are running out of supplies. They, uh, ISIS forces are starting to bear down on them. <clears throat> and so the U.S. government will be dropping uh, humanitarian relief to the extent that it can, uh, fighter jets will be accompanying these uh, these airdrops, and the president had said that uh, targeted airstrikes could soon be used to protect American personnel in Erbil. It also could be used to protect Baghdad if it came under pressure, uh, and it could also be used to um, protect Kurdish forces, uh, as well as uh, these. Um, <clears throat> these uh, 40,000 uh, Iraqis. And uh, in terms of congressional auth authorization, he has uh, consulted with congressional leaders, and he said that in the event that um, the military strikes actually take place, they plan to file a report under the War Powers Act. Now, they don't believe that they need authorization because of Article 2 um, uh, dealing with the uh, protecting U.S. lives in Erbil. Uh, and they also right. have a deal with Iraq in terms of um, uh, some type of protection accord. But they, it, it seems like it's possible they will go forward with sort of some type of War Powers Act um, uh, regime. In other words, they would file a report under the War Powers Act. They would have to justify right. the strikes 
under uh, either why they're authorized or not, or then seek uh, permission after 60 days if they continue. So that's where we're at. Um, what are your thoughts? What a mess. Um, my thoughts are, uh, as always, well, thanks again, uh, Dick Cheney and George W. Bush for the situation. Um, I think that my feeling on these things, I always worry, of course, about mission creep. Um, President Obama has said openly that he will not get us reinvolved in Iraq. Of course, you know, we've heard these kinds of things in the past. Um, on the flip side of it, obviously, I, I really, to me, this is the one time that I've often, you know, that I've made the argument that I think uh, that air power needs to be used. Is you, you can't, I don't, you know, when we, we did this with Rwanda and other places, I really don't think you can sit there and watch uh, a militant group march towards civilians and massacre them and do nothing. Um, I think we need to certainly get humanitarian assistance, food, all of that to them. Um, and I would say militarily, I don't believe we should do anything with that one exception I just said. I mean, clearly, if satellites are showing these guys are marching towards civilians and are going to kill them, and that the, the only way at that particular moment to stop them from doing that is to bomb them, then I would favor bombing them to stop people from being massacred. Otherwise, no, I don't want massive bombings around the country, and I don't want... I mean, you know, uh, large-scale American involvement. I think we need to get the UN involved and on the ground protecting them. Um, and at some point, you know, it, we need to. Uh, I mean, I guess I don't know. You know, I would say normally um, we'd want to get in a situation like this. You want to get regional actors involved, but the whole region is in. You know, there's 15 different wars going on with everybody hating everybody else. I'm not sure how we could do that here. So uh, that complicates the whole situation too. Um, so that, I mean, again, you know, I'm, I, I think that's far from perfect. I don't think there is anything close to perfect in this. But, yes, I don't think we should sit and watch civilians be massacred, and I don't think we can do that. Um, we have to, but we do have to make sure we do not get reinvolved in this war and it does not become a large-scale operation. Yeah. I, I, I wish I had better words of wisdom than that, but that's the best I can come up with. Yeah, I, you know, I mean, I, I, I and, and this isn't uh, popular with some people who listen to the program, obviously, uh, but uh, I, 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 I tend to agree in the um, in situations where uh, there is a, a broad consensus. And, 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 and by that, I mean, really, essentially from the U.N. Uh, now, the Security Council uh, condemned uh, the um, uh, the attacks on um, uh, uh, ISIS attacks. They have urged international support for the Iraqi government. They, I don't know that they have specifically addressed uh, the Yazidi uh, situation. And I tend to actually uh, want that type of assessment from the UN that there is an imminent... Um, uh, real threat of yep. a massacre of civilians uh, before we act. And I do think I, that I agree is... I agree 100%. Yeah. In, in situations where we have the capacity to uh, to stop something like that, I think we should. Now, you know, the, the, the problem is, of course, is that rarely do we stop in those situations... After we have done that, it you know more often than not, uh, it is the case that it, it it functions as a fig leaf. Now, of course, you know Libya ended up um, uh, it, it ended up uh, we were, or I should say, uh, our our so-called coalition partners there uh, ended up um, uh, more or less supporting the overthrow of Gaddafi. Um, I don't think that's well, and, I, and I didn't. I didn't agree with that, to be clear, with what we did in Libya, because I didn't think that there was a very clear case that my biggest problem, you know, is, you know, one minute when you get the sort of neocons like John McCain, one minute he's like taking pictures with guys and saying how wonderful they are, going and hanging out with Gaddafi in a big tent, and the next minute he's talking about bombing them. Um, it has to be very clear. And, well, and you know, and I, and I, I know this isn't popular with all of your listeners, and but on this one thing, I guess, with some people on the left, I have to disagree, which is I would say every th other option has to be exhausted. 
I know there's the possibility of pill- uh, the possibility of mission creep. I know there are people that want to get involved for nefarious reasons, uh, from oil to geopolitical reasons. I know all that. I just think if it, if you do have that kind of an assessment and it is clear, I just don't think you can sit there and watch civilians sit on a mountain as a militant force heads towards them and massacres them. If that is it is very clear that is the case and a bombing is limited to that, then I am in favor. Yeah, well, in 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 Libya, the UN um, did uh, um, uh, they did pass a resolution uh, that was um, to specifically um, stop the slaughter of uh, of innocents in and I, I I'm not sure I remember what the the city was. Um, but it's probably Benghazi. Uh, it, it, it very actually could have been. Now, with that said, uh, I believe that um, uh, Western forces went beyond the um, uh, the resolution that uh, had been passed. Went be- beyond the authorization provided by the re- resolution. That's it was the way. The, See, that's the way I feel too, Sam. What I'm saying is, if it had been limited to protecting civilians being slaughtered. And that had been exactly only what we had done then, you know, but and that and I, and I understand probably people in your chat room and other places will raise the question, well, why won't it go beyond that here? They won't, because and I that, don't have that, a chat room. I got rid of that. Oh, so that's not, uh, oh, that's well, not that going to be a problem what, at all. When did you do that? Uh, well, I never had a chat room, but... Um, Didn't you have a place where you sat there and... Oh, okay. Well, and we just literally did it in this room. Um, oh, but, well, with your chat room right there, with those two geniuses that you work with. Wow. What kind of chats are they throwing? No, no I mean, yeah, but, uh, but you know, look, here, here's the bottom line. I mean, can, can, can we really just sit by, and, and particularly in Iraq, where I believe that we have a, um, a, a, a huge responsibility for this? Um, yeah. You know, and, and, uh, and so, uh, I mean, that's, that's, my, that, that's, that's my feeling here. And, I, and, and of course, um, I think it is incumbent upon all of us to make sure that we do not um, supersede this very narrow uh, mission. Now, here's the thing. The reason why we will not see uh, expansion of this mission while Maliki is the head of the Iraqi government is because this is the leverage the United States is using. Uh, Maliki has lost support of the Iranians uh, he has lost support of the Americans. Uh, he, of course, has alienated uh, the Sunni population there, which uh, in many respects has led to this dominance by ISIS. Uh, and ISIS now, we should say, has heavy weaponry that they have gotten from uh, from the what was the Iraqi army in the north and our own weapons. So we will be. Uh, if we do engage with ISIS, probably bombing our own tanks or isn't what, it funny how that always ends up happening? Yes, yeah, well, somebody's going to make again, some cash here, and so um, at let's least thank that uh, will. Paul Bremer again for shutting down the uh, for kicking everybody out of the army and and basically uh, putting the scarlet leather on anybody who'd been part of the Ba'ath regime because that worked out well. Michael wanted to add something. Oh, it's it's just. It's darkly amusing, but a couple of weeks ago when ISIS, they rolled through a place and they stole some, uh, took uh, tanks that we had sold, and they tweeted out that they got these things and that they trusted that the American firms would honor the warranties on them. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> there you go. Vicious, vicious uh, bastards. So, uh, I mean, so that's that. I mean, we will obviously... Um, uh, we're going to be on vacation next week, but Matt and Mike will be talking about this on Monday, I imagine. Uh, and, you know, I just don't think that you can let 30 or 40,000 people, um, civilians, just die on a mountaintop. Um, That's specifically genocidal. Yeah, I mean, that is, that is, yes, that is specifically genocidal. I just don't think that you can do that. It is. And, um, and, then, and we're the, we're, if you, just at that point where that's the only thing, we're the only thing, and that's the only thing that can stop it, then, again, you know, I, 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 to me, war is, is literally at the way end there, the last resort to anything um, is using force. But in this particular case, I, again, 
if one group's marching towards the other one about to massacre them, one group's made up of civilians, the other group is made up of these hardened militants. I don't, I just don't know what else you do. I certainly don't think you can sit there and watch it. 